Hey, what's up? Brian Snow here. And yeah, I'm still a little energetic. And this is the premiere edition of Snowman After Dark. And this is where you can hear a combination of stuff that you'll hear on my morning show, Snowman in the Morning, as well as the Daily BS. That, well, this is just some fun stuff. And it's after dark. So you may hear a few things that you shouldn't. You may not. This is an extension of also my wonderful podcast, Snowman Unfiltered, which also will appear on your favorite app. Well, on this edition, this premiere edition of Snowman After Dark, Cole Johnson and I get together to talk all things NFL and all things LeBron James and what's wrong with the NBA. So enjoy this premiere edition of the Snowman After Dark. Now it's time for me to welcome one of my good friends. His name is Cole Johnson, that man in charge of Cole Sports. And he joins me right now. How are you, my brother? Oh, man, I'm doing good. I'm doing good this Tuesday morning. Uh, I cannot complain. Doesn't it feel good to be one of the folks that has a nationally syndicated show when no one thought (sighs) we would, when no one thought you or I would have that doesn't that feel good <laughs> it feels it, it feels really good and and it, it's it's validation to the yeah, work that is. both you and i put into the craft and when you've had other people say you don't have the voice you don't have the knowledge you don't have the talent you don't have the wherewithal, you don't have the stroke and we both can equally individually and collectively say up yours to all of you with all that because we have all that now it's proven (laughs) we ended it before they knew what to do with it isn't that what you taught me (laughs) that's right when it when it comes to this when it comes to sports knowledge that we have man we were through with it before (laughs) everyone learned what to do with it (laughs) and i love that speaking of being through with it before they knew what to do with it how about those 49ers on Sunday. Here, here's what I, I noticed. And with them, I don't, I don't even look at Sunday's game and I don't even look at last Saturday's game against the Vikings in the divisional round. That stretch they had, which actually started with the Packers mm. <laughs> the, the Sunday before Thanksgiving. <laughs> yes, it did. I, I, I looked at that stretch when they played them, then they went to Baltimore, then they went to New Orleans. And they went two and one. And if it weren't for a field goal at the end of the Baltimore game, at the gun, they would have they would have been undefeated possibly in that three game stretch. When I saw them, and they had injuries, they were necked up, they were beat up, but the whole group was so dogmatic. They were they were determined, and they went through that stretch two and one. I, I, I was impressed. I was I was utterly impressed, and I was I was impressed with the with the L they took in Baltimore because they played the Ravens style. Mm-hmm. They played their style in their building. They hung with them. They played they them just, even. They just yeah. They played them even. The only difference was they just couldn't. They just didn't make that one play they needed. The Ravens yeah, did in that and, game, and, and that was the fourth down. Uh, that was the fourth down gamble that the Forty ers couldn't convert. They came up. Uh, Half a yard short. Baltimore took it, ran out the clock. But, hey, the 49ers are still standing, and now they get to go to Miami to claim their sixth Mm -hmm. Super Bowl. Right, and and to go along with that theme, they came out of that that, that part two and one, and I said to you, on air and off air, all they got to do is finish it off. When they go to Seattle and beat them, if they do that, I love their chances. What do they do? They go to CenturyLink, they win by what? (laughs) <laughs> three inches <laughs> but yep. hey, a win's a win doesn't matter how a you win, get it absolutely at that point a win's a win the 49ers get the, they get the they get the first round buy the they need it they got mm-hmm. the buy they got the west title they got the number one seed and they got healthy and you and you know something even more so that well, any team would want to have the number one seed in their conference mm-hmm. so I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to shortchange that. What what they needed more than the the number one seed in the NFC was a buy because the they last time they had a buy, it was in October. So mm-hmm. they needed to lick wounds. 
So that buy was more important to them. And when they licked those wounds, and you saw <laughs> four and Alexander come back, when you saw that team become healthy, and I actually said it in the division round, I said the team that I think they would love to see is the Vikings because I think they would they would be tailor made for the 49ers to beat. Mm-hmm. What did they do? They beat them up. <laughs> they just beat them up. <laughs> they did. And then the Packers, who we saw back in November, yep. they beat them up. And when I when they got to the NFC the uh, NFC Championship game Sunday, I beat, figured they was going to beat them up some more. They, they beat what them up they again. They, they beat them up. They beat them up again. And they beat them up again. <laughs> so <laughs> if if I if, if I were to say that I was shocked and astonished, no, no. And in fact, the way they did it, I'm not shocked and astonished. In fact, I expected it, and it makes me happy to see that a team. A, a team won the way that they were built. Mm-hmm. You know, they are they are built to be physical up front on both sides of the ball. They're built to punish you on offense. They are built to be athletically better than you mm-hmm. and even phys- more physical than you on defense, especially with the front four. Absolutely. That's how they beat the Vikings. That's how they beat the Packers. And that's how they beat the and Seahawks. They're, and they're in Miami. That, that, that's yeah, how and they, that's how they beat the Seahawks in Week 17. Yep. Yeah. That's how they beat the Seahawks to earn that bye. They get healthy. Quan Alexander returns. D. Ford returns. The Vikings come into Levi's Stadium and they go, "Uh oh, they're fully healthy. We got problems." Mm-hmm. And Minnesota had a lot of problems in the divisional round. Yeah, they did. They did. They did. That was it. Was all they can to stay with them in the first half. Mm-hmm. And and and, one, and once they got out the tunnel of the third quarter, it was a wrap. <laughs> uh, it just was a wrap. And it, 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 but at least they can say they hung for a half with yep. the Packers. As soon as they touched the field, <laughs> it was done. And I, I said this to a friend of mine. Uh, shout out to my man, Christian Simpson, one of the brightest in his yes. minds that I know. Yes, love I him. said to him, yeah, I said to him, the, the 49ers, off the bus, once feet hit pavement into the stadium. I'm not talking about when they throw on the pads or the uniform or when they get on the field. Mm-mm. When feet hit pavement to the stadium, their goal is to run 200 yards against you on, a, on the ground. That's their goal. 200. <laughs> two hundred, <laughs> not a buck. Two hundred on the ground. That's not, what we want to do. Not a buck and a half. Not a buck. They want two no. bills, and they want each two of bills the, on the ground. Each of these two playoff games, they got two bills: two hundred against the yes. Vikings and two eighty against the Packers. And I got a good friend, Trey Larkins, uh, one of the co-hosts of the Wise Guys, that you can hear on Arena Sports Net. He is a big time Packer fan, and. He said, he said, I don't care what happens. Aaron Rodgers is still the best quarterback, and Aaron Jones is still the best running back. And I texted him back, and I said, I hate to inform you of this, but you may have a good back, but the 49ers have three of them. Have three. <laughs> they have three. And last I checked, unless my math has severely fallen off since third grade, three is better than one. Especially if all three can gain at least 600 yards apiece. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, three is better than one. And it was proven Sunday. Yeah, it was. Because, at, you know, in the beginning, it looked like it, it looked like the game plan was to establish Coleman. Mm-hmm. But then, and, but then, Mostert caught on fire, and the Packers defense just couldn't. They didn't have an answer for him. Joe Buck, no said it, for him. Joe Buck said it best on the last 49er drive before the half. They cannot stop the run in reference to the Packers. They didn't stop it in November, and they sure as hell didn't stop it on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, and I, I figured that was their Achilles heel even before their their first matchup in November. Mm-hmm. It, and I'm like, yeah, that's going to be tough. You can't stop the run, and you're facing against the number one rushing offense in the NFC. Yep. Yeah, that's not going to be a pretty picture for you. <laughs> and and on top of that, people want to throw numbers at me saying, oh, Aaron Rodgers did this, and Aaron Rodgers did that. How about this? Aaron Rodgers is 0 for San Francisco in San Francisco. <laughs> how How about this as well? 32, 39, 321 yards, two touchdowns. Oh, two interceptions. Yep. That was a stat line <laughs> Sunday. And guess how many points the Packers ended up getting? 20. <laughs> 20. <laughs> so 
here's this bad man who actually threw for <laughs> 300 yards, and you saw how ineffective he was throughout mm-hmm. the whole entire game. And and how about and also how about this? 0 and four against the number one passing defense in his career in the playoffs, and this covers 15 seasons. I, Stephen A. so over? badly can wants. Can we stop? Stephen A. so badly can, wants to tout that bad man, and he's been bad, historically bad. He's old for San Francisco. Yeah. He hasn't beaten the number one pass defense in the playoffs. He threw two picks on Sunday, Emmanuel Mosley and, fittingly, Richard Sherman to close the deal. Mm-hmm. And the 49ers did on Sunday what they did in November. They got after the exact they, same thing. They, they pinned their ears back and came after him. They did. The, it, it was it was almost as if Shanahan and and Salah just went with the game plan. They just dusted it off and mm-hmm. say, you know, what we did in November, we're gonna do that Sunday. I mean, because <laughs> it looked like it looked like the same game. It, it looked did. like the same game. It did. And and <laughs> it, it was it was it was for a for a casual fan. You would say it was ugly because, well, you know, a, a team that loves to run, that's ugly. For football purists like you and me, a run game in the playoffs, that's one of the most beautiful things you could ever see. Man. Because it just, it's, 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 a, it's a sign of an offense saying to a defense, we're coming at you, buddy, come and stop me, and if you can't, we're going to demolish you. That I mean, is not, there is no more beautiful thing in the, in the, <laughs> for a football fan, a football peer to see, especially if it's your team, than your team basically saying, I'm more mad than you, and we proved it. Mm-hmm. Twice. <laughs> it's just straight in, up. In this case, twice. Once in November, once in January. And I told all my, oh, Packer, it, I told all my Packer fans, if we see y'all in January, we're going to punch you in the mouth again. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I, actually told, I actually told one of my friends, I said, it's not going to be like 37 to 8, <laughs> but I don't see this game being much better right. than that. Right. I see the Packers doing a little bit more, but they got nothing They got nothing to stop that, uh, that, that running attack for the 49ers. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing will stop that 49ers running attack. Nothing. Which brings, they got nothing for it. Which brings me to this. Congrats to the Kansas City Chiefs for reaching the Super Bowl for the first time in 50 years, they claim the Lamar Hunt Trophy in their house against the Tennessee Titans. But the Chiefs are going to have some problems in two weeks facing Let me... this vaunted, and yes, I say vaunted, San Francisco rushing attack. If Jimmy Garoppolo throws less than 10 passes in the Super Bowl, which I have a distinct feeling he, he will throw less than 10 passes, Boy, Kansas City going to have some issues. <laughs> now, now, here's what could boost their confidence. Now, I don't really think the Chiefs defense is all the way back. Mm-hmm. However, I, I, however, they, they seem to be better than they were because they were going through a stretch like mid, mid-October to early, early November when they they played a run of the AFC South opponents. They right. had the... Colts at home, then they had the Texans at home, then they went to uh, Nashville to play the Titans. Yes. And each game that I just mentioned, the opponent, the Colts, the Texans, and the Titans respectively ran for at least 170 yards against them Yep, on the ground. Yep. So, you know, my, my thought was, well, the Titans, if they have a chance, if they have a scintilla of hope, they would have to repeat what Derrick Henry has done the last three games before, which mm-hmm. is to run for at least 180 yards. Right. And I knew they would come up with a plan to limit him. I did not think it would be that they would play ball control to do it, which that to me was impressive. Yes. Uh, when I saw the Chiefs of 21-17 hold the ball nine minutes, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, so this is how they decided to sort of hamstring Derrick Henry's effect. Yep especially in the second half, that was one of the most brilliant moves because I would not I would have not pictured them to do that. This, this fast break offense, I would have never pictured they would play keep away yeah. from a running offense, but that was brilliant. That was that was brilliant strategy. Absolutely. And, and if the Chiefs do stand a chance to beat the 49ers, that's what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to do that against the 49ers too. They're going to have to play keep away from that offense because once the 49ers get the ball on offense – I've said this on your air yep. just now. I've said it before. <laughs> I've said it on other people's air. I've said it on my own. 
The 49ers on offense want to punish you. They want to punish you and punish you and punish you some more. They do not believe that you can stop their three-headed monster. They don't believe it. <laughs> am I lying, sir? No, not at all. What have I said <laughs> on this program since April? You and I talked right after the 49ers drafted Nick Bosa, and you asked, mm-hmm. you know, how do you think the 49ers would win this year? My exact response was, see you in Miami. I said that mm-hmm. on several programs, and people thought I was nuts. Well, See you in Miami. Now, I did not. I did not have the Forty Nineers in Miami. I will cop to that. However, right, I didn't think they was going to. I didn't. I didn't think they was going to repeat four and twelve. I right. did not think that right, at all. Right, right, right. I, I, I figured the 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 move with uh, the the draft pick with Bolsa, the 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 uh, free agent move to get Ford onto that defensive line. I figured, okay, well, that defensive line looks really strong. Um, Sherman looks like he's healthy, so the secondary looks like it's being cemented. I did not know much about Alexander. I did not know much about him. But when I <laughs> saw the season go along, I was like, doggone, man. The linebacking core is being sewn up by the yep. by the middle linebacker here. I'm like, doggone. This defense is this defense is bad. And I don't mean bad isn't bad, I mean bad isn't good. Yep. And <laughs> and then my thought was, well, the defense is good. That team is gonna and I've said this to I said this to you from August. That team is going to go as far as Jimmy Garoppolo could, could take them. And when I said that to people, people thought I was talking about what well, he needed to throw uh-huh. 25, 30, 300 yards, four touchdowns, no yep. interceptions. Yep. No. No, I meant he would lead the team however the team needed to be led. If it meant that he had to throw 300 yards, he could do that. If it meant that he only throws eight passes, he could do that. <laughs> as long as the team wins, that's all that matters. And that's all I cared about with mm-hmm. him. And, and if he did how he has been, and I figured he was. I figured if if he would limit his mistakes, I remember I said to you, you did. I think they were like four or five and zero. Oh, but I was seeing a lot of mistakes by him. I yes. said he needs to curb that. If he curbs that, that team can go to Miami. But if he doesn't curb it, that's going to cost him. Mm-hmm. And I'd be doggone if he fixed that problem and he did not turn the ball over as much and nope. he didn't turn the ball over but once in the two games in the playoffs. Right. So uh, that. It, it, the team is absolutely phenomenal. How they are, how how they are structured, because they can beat you however you want. As the Saints, as the Saints found out, because yep. the Saints were like, okay, well, um, you you're not going to try to beat us running. You can probably you get some yards on us running, but you're not going to beat us running. Okay, fine. And Garoppolo <laughs> threw over. <laughs> so, so what is so what does Garoppolo do in New Orleans? Oh, he just hangs 349 yards. Right. So. <laughs> you know, so that team is built to beat a, a, another squad in NFL, however they so desire. Whatever you take away from them, they will beat you the other way. Mm-hmm. So if you want to take the run from them, fine. And they'll still run on you and still run effectively on you. But if you're going to take it away from them the way they don't run 45 times, where they just run maybe 25 to 30, okay. That just means they'll throw 30 times and be yep. more effective. Yep. If you're going to do like what the the, the Packers <laughs> The Packers did, and it's like, okay, Garoppolo, you're not going to complete any passes to Debo Samuel and Emmanuel Sanders, and, and you're definitely not going to get George Kittle off. Okay. <laughs> we'll just hand the ball off 45 times. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. You pick your poison however you want to get your butt whooped. That is how the 49ers will, will beat you, and that's impressive. You really have teams that can beat you that way, ever. Look at how way. they got the ball into Debo Samuel's hands. So they took the mm-hmm. pass. They took the passing game away. The Packers did, but the Forty ers said, "You know what? We're going to put this passing game on the shelf, and we're going to put the ball. We're going to put the ball in all of our playmakers' hands, running it." Debo Samuel, two carries, yeah. forty six yards yesterday. I, really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been been a fan of the Forty hey, ers since eighty one. I've seen Roger Craig, Wendell Tyler, Amos Lawrence, Ricky Waters, uh, Tom Rathman, William Floyd, but Sunday. Wow. I mean, it, it, it just goes to show. You mentioned all of those wonderful names in 49er lore, which, well, I mean, their successful playoff run started in 81. Now, yes. they've had some playoffs. They had some playoff success even before then. But all of that, and none of them can claim that they ran as much as this 49er <laughs> as team. Right, he most of did <laughs> Sunday. That should tell you how beautiful and how um, important a performance that Mozart put together Sunday. 
that it would be the best a 49ers ever done on the ground in the history of the franchise. Yes. 29 for We're 220 talking. and four touchdowns yesterday. Three. He had 160 yards <laughs> by means. halftime. 160 yards and three touchdowns by halftime. By the time they walked to the locker room, yep. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> uh, and I was like, oh man, game over. Game set. <laughs> what, match. It don't even matter how the Packers come back in the second half. This game's over. You know what? <laughs> I, I got to share this story. This was wild yesterday. Um, doing some catch, go, doing some uh, catch up work on Sunday. Um, wife and I are sitting here in in the office. We got the we we got the game on. And she dozed off, but then she looked to her left where the television is and saw that it was 27 to nothing. She got up and mm-hmm. said, honey, I'm going to bed. This game's over. Smart woman. Smart woman. <laughs> she, got up and said this, she got up and said, this game's over. And when the, final, when, when the final gun happened, I got up and I went to bed and I watched the celebration from bed. Because the game mm-hmm. was in the game was in the book. If you want, if y'all want to really think about it, yeah. the game was in the book once the 49ers took the lead seven to nothing. The game was in the book, pretty much, because pretty much. they pinned their ears and came after Rodgers. And oh, by the way, Rodgers turned the ball over yeah. three times. Mm-hmm. The fumble turned into a touchdown. And I had I got so many friends at work that saying, "Well, we uh, after the um, the game in November." I had so many of my friends saying, well, we stopped George Kittle. We only limited him to one catch. Yeah, here's the problem. It went for 61 yards and a touchdown. <laughs> okay. And they, uh, like I said earlier, you can you can try to stop one of them. But you can't you stop, all, stop of all of them. Because it's it's like, gonna be someone else is going to hurt you. It's like that, that, that tweet you sent me Monday morning of Jerry Rice at age 57, folks, still running that slant and doing it well. How do you look pretty? Mm. <laughs> I, I seriously thought I seriously thought I'm like, oh, he must, he must be tr- um, coming off that ACL injury because it looked like it was 30 years ago. Because, I mean, he looked like he ran that slant. I'm like, oh, my gosh, that he, dude has muscle memory because he did it so smooth. He ran it for 16 years with not one but two Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Two. Yep. Two Hall he of Fame quarterbacks. Two quarterbacks Hall of Fame. Yep. Yes. Steve Steve Young was on Steve Young was on the sideline. Jerry Rice was on the sideline. You think the Bay Area wasn't amped up for this NFC championship game? And folks, the last time the Packers and the 49ers met in the NFC title game, A it was at Candlestick Park, B, Brett Favre was the starting quarterback, and C, the Packers actually won twenty three to ten. You didn't get a, 1997, yeah. and the 49ers were the number one seed in 1997. You didn't yes, get were. any sense of that, even though Stephen A. loves to say Aaron Rodgers is such a bad man. Well, the bad man on Sunday was Raheem Mostert with 220 well, yards. No. Well, well, actually, no, well, Stephen A. was right, because that bad man was a bad man for real. <laughs> He was no <laughs> different thing. And and, 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 I, and I actually said this in, in, in circles. I said, you know what the 49ers need to do? And that's exactly what they did. Run the they football. Said, uh, Aaron, yeah, well, they had to run the football, but on defense. Aaron Jones, you may get some carries. We're going to try to limit you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Devontae Adams, you'll probably get some catches. But you know what? You're not going to beat us. Nope. Because you know who's going to beat us? Number 12. We're going to force number 12 to beat us. And he didn't. And when and he didn't. And when have you ever heard anyone say that the game plan should be Aaron Rodgers has to beat you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it. Sunday. And then Aaron Rodgers throws over three hundred yards and doesn't even come close to beating you. Nope. So it just go. And then let me shout out this offense. This well, shout out the offensive line of the, the 49ers as well because man, they they're bouncers. Man, they 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 just they just they they just throw people out of club. Mm-hmm. But. But that that defensive front, I'm so in awe of those four. That front four to the point where, oh, uh, to the point where, oh gosh, Arsenal, Buckner, Bosa, Ford, they don't need to have another person rush with them. Nope, they can rush four all game long, and they make the life of offensive linemen 
horrible. Yes. They make the life of quarterbacks horrible. And I'm thinking to myself, how is it they consistently beat offensive lines <laughs> to where they can get the quarterback down on the turf three, four, five times a game? And I'm like, and they don't do blitzes. I'm like, what you, is they doing on that front? Do you know, I'm, I'm, you want a number? Ooh. You know I dig you know I dig in the numbers. I use my eyes, but I also dig in the numbers. How about this? The last three games, going back to week 17, you know how many times the 49ers blitzed? Once. And that was Sunday. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was going to say. The, I bet you that number is, if I'd be surprised, I'd be surprised if it was five. <laughs> every time I, every time I look, because I, I didn't watch all of Sunday's game, I saw, I saw the highlights of it. Right. Above, above, above the first half, for sure. But the, Almost every game I saw the 49ers on defense this year, I don't think I ever saw them blitz once. Nope. And even if they brought somebody else, which in the Vikings game they did, mm-hmm. they brought – I can't remember. it was I can't remember which linebacker they brought because it wasn't Alexander. But they, they brought a linebacker. They had Bosa go back in coverage. Yep. <laughs> and, when, and when you know it, they threw in Bosa's direction and Bosa defended the pass like he was, yep. like he was a safety. And it, it, it was like, th- this is impressive. This is impressive how athletic that whole defensive line is and how that, that defensive front seven is and how that scheme is to where they say we are only going to rush four. And sometimes we'll rush three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we still get mm-hmm. your quarterback. I mean, they rushed three a couple times in the November game against Green Bay, and they still got him. Matter of fact, mm-hmm. first series of the game. First series of the game. They rush three, they get to Rodgers, fumble. And the 49ers take it in a play later. I just I, – I, I'm, 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 just, I'm just in awe at how physically dominant this mm-hmm. team is. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and I said – I think I said this in other circles. I didn't say this to you. But the only team I thought that would have given the 49ers fits would have been the Seahawks. Yes. Only because – they know the 49ers better than any other team this year. Correct. Besides them, I said if they if they avoid, and I'm not saying the 49ers would want to not play them. They probably would love to play them because they love the physicality and they the would love to not, They would love to knock them around again the same way they knocked them yeah. around the Century Length Field in week in week 17. And we had they faced right. the Seahawks a third time, they'd have, they'd have punched them in the mouth. Because I think they, they did, I, I think the be, I, I think the Seahawks would have won the game. I mean, not Seahawks. The Forty Nineers would have won the game, but it would not, it would have been a lot closer than yeah than thirty seven to twenty Vikings <laughs> and the game they played against the Packers. Because in my in my estimation, and I actually said this, I said, man, if 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 the Forty Nineers could could tailor make their run to the Super Bowl, they play the they play the Vikings, then they play the Packers mm-hmm. because those two teams are tailor made for the Forty Nineers to beat. Yeah, and you know they get can they get Kansas City again. Kudos for Kansas City in, in, in making the Super Bowl. But my biggest question is going to be how is Kansas City going to handle that ferocious pass rush? Here's how they're going to have to handle it, and 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 the thing is they don't have it as strong as they should. The only way you can calm that defensive front. It's if you have a running game that is solid enough to do so. And Damian Williams, all respect to you, my brother. Yes. But, uh, no, you, you, you just don't do it enough. It's, you know, you're not, you're not that difference maker as a back. You know, if you were like Kareem Hunt was, maybe. But you're not that guy. So – the, the the Chiefs have to find a way to run, and if they if they have to actually make Patrick Mahomes himself run, mm-hmm. they're going to have to do that. They're going to have yeah. to move that pocket yep. because that's the only way I could see the Chiefs stymie at least to a small degree that pressure that's going to come up front. Because if not, if Mahomes is going to be in that pocket, he's going to be sitting duck. Yep, it, it might as well it might as well be a defensive line drill. <laughs> because that's exactly what I've been seeing the last two games when it comes to any offense going up against that defensive front for the 49ers. It, it's, it has literally looked like a defensive line drill. Like a, a, a center, the center is a defensive back coach or a defensive line coach. He's, he's playing center. He snaps the ball. And each, and each guy, they just, they just take turns doing bull rushes, clubs, 
spins. They just take their turn learning how to do or getting the feel to do different moves <laughs> to get to that five foot yep. pillow that's standing eight yards behind the line of scrimmage. Mm-hmm. That is what I. That's what I have been seeing the last two games. And, and I don't yes, see the Chiefs do that with Mahomes. I'm gonna see the third. And, and I don't see Robert Sala changing his scheme. I don't see him blitzing. I don't think he'll he have shouldn't. to. He, he, he shouldn't have to. No, he should. He shouldn't have to. He, he shouldn't have to. I mean, kudos to Patrick Mahomes. Don't get me wrong, but mm-hmm. and and you know what? This is what I. This is the comparison that I love to make, and I'm going to continue to make it. You know who Patrick Holmes m- reminds me of that the 49ers can use to get themselves ready for Miami? A young Russell Wilson. Yeah, I, I can see that. I can see that. He, Mahomes doesn't run as much, but he may need to run a little more mm-hmm. <laughs> come, come, <laughs> come the Sunday after next. Because, uh, I mean, look, Mahomes can throw in tight windows. There's no question about that. Absolutely. He has a great arm. He has a yeah. he has a great mind for the game. Yes, he can throw defenses off. True, but I, I but I I don't think he has played a defense that is so diverse to where and so ferocious because, and so ferocious to where because the way Mahomes plays they they're baiting you to bring a blitz mm-hmm. so that they can just beat you over the top. And the Forty Nineers are not a defense where you can do that all that often to. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it, as proven in Sunday's game, Rodgers only did it once because the second time he tried, <laughs> that ball fell to the arms of one Richard Sherman. So, I mean, <laughs> this is not a team you can bomb and throw over the top of. So uh, and so y- you can't really dare in the blitz. And then when they rush, they're rushing enough to where you still have seven, if not eight, covering <laughs> all of your guys downfield. So yep. How are you going to fit it unless you're going to just – Check down and dump it off and check down and dump it off. And then if that's the case, you might see one of those defensive linemen pick pick the ball off and run for six, mm-hmm. as Bosa's done earlier this year. Yeah. So, I mean, that to me is the dilemma of the, for the Chiefs. They're going to have to find a way to successfully attack, successfully attack that defensive front. And I think if they can attack the defensive front, they may have a better shot of stymieing the defense as a whole. Yeah. But that front four, Ooh. that's where it starts and that's where it ends for the 49ers because it makes the other seven they, – they, all they got to do is do their job. They don't mm-hmm. even have to concern about that's holding it. a guy longer than five seconds. They don't have to concern themselves with with seeing somebody leak out in the flat and t- cover so much ground if you're the linebacking core. No. And they don't have to and, – and most times they don't even have to worry about a quarterback uh, tucking the ball in and running. Because they probably can handle that. Mm-hmm. The, the, like I said, the only way I can see the Chiefs actually trying to do something that could maybe help their cause is like, like you said, if they could do a, uh, if, if if Mahomes could do a, a Russell Wilson impersonation, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Cole Johnson, the host of On the Daily and Cole Sports and. The VIP honors coming up very soon, but I, I got a question, and I got I, I need to have a sneak peek at this. Last time I ran, last Friday, I ran your premier bronze sexual confessions on Snowman in the Morning, and the response was fabulous. It was absolutely fabulous. I sat here and laughed my head off when I listened to that segment. And everything you said in that was was true. You and I have discussed him on this program at nauseum. How about a sneak mm-hmm. peek in the next? In, the, in how about a sneak peek to Wednesday? What you got up your sleeve? Okay. Well, what I'm going to talk about tomorrow because, well, if for those who don't know, and on the daily, uh, every Wednesday I do a segment where it's all LeBron, and I don't talk about LeBron James at any other juncture on my program the rest of the week. <laughs> it's only it's only Wednesday in mm-hmm. one segment. Mm-hmm. I just talk LeBron, LeBron, LeBron. So I'm, I'm going to mention the fact that he now is the number one merchandise seller. He's helped by the Lakers, of course, but he's the one uh, <laughs> merchandise seller in the league. Uh, he has the most votes for the uh, – for, for the All Stars uh, game, mm-hmm. and more than likely he's going to be the captain of one of the teams. Again, uh, uh, he 
he got yeah again. Uh, he he got MVP chance when he was in Houston oh, this Lord. past weekend. Why? And yeah, and I had a conversation with a bronze sexual. <laughs> where <laughs> this is where it usually starts, and this is where I usually start laughing. <laughs> Where we had this, we had this comparison of LeBron has never lost a first round series. Oh, Guys geez. that I know, like Jordan, well, he has lost his first first round series, or actually first three first round series. He only won one game in 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 those three first first round series. Nineteen eighty five, and he didn't win a he didn't win a first round series until Scottie Pippen joined the team. Nineteen eighty eight. Right, 1988. So I, I, I heard that. You, and You heard that ridiculousness? I, I, yes, I heard that ridiculousness. And so I, I put it in this brass tax. I said, okay, so if you, had, if you have a woman and you get a chance to make love to her six times and you make love to her all six times, that's ultimate success. Mm-hmm. But if you get a chance to make love to a woman nine times, but you only do it three. <laughs> you mean to tell me that you're going to award yourself because you had more chances? You had more chances to get the brass ring, but you failed six of those nine times versus you had six times to get the brass ring and you got it all six times? As a man, you would feel incomplete. So you'd feel why like is a it that failure. we're going to award partial? Like a man, you'd, f- you'd feel like a failure. Let's just thank you. Say it the way we're both married, man. Let's just put it all yes. on the table. We'd feel like failures. Three thank out you. of three so, out of nine. Hell mm-hmm. no! Unacceptable, so why, man. <laughs> so why would we award partial success to someone? <laughs> Now, I would mention more along the lines, too, but why wouldn't the reward give a participation trophy to oh, a God. guy who, yes, he's undefeated in the first round. I'm happy that LeBron James is undefeated in the first round. But Wonderful. Would you rather be, but, and I think I know where you're going, so I'll complete your question. Would you rather be undefeated please. in the first round or undefeated in the World Championship Series? I would be, I would rather be undefeated in the World Championship Series because that would mean that, my my name, whether I was the number one guy on the team or not, but in Jordan's case, he was. If I'm the number one man on the team and I get a chance to go to the biggest series of my sports year six times, yep. and all six times I'm the best player on the court and win for my team, I'd rather that than to claim that I'm that I'm whatever and oh, I don't know how many first round series LeBron James has played in. I really don't care. But whatever and oh, in every series I played the first round. You better, t- you be? know what, take the, you know what, I will close with this. Take this with you to your bronze sexual confession tomorrow. Let me add, I'm going to add this for you, and I'm going to give you a big old lob, all right? Mm. The teams that Michael Jordan had to face in the first round, 85 mm-hmm a two-time Defensive Player of the Year in Sidney Moncrief and the Milwaukee Bucks. 86, the Boston Celtics, enough said. 87, Mm -hmm. the Boston Celtics, enough said. Okay, They were not slouches either. And and, oh, by Mm -hmm. the way, in 87, the the Boston Celtics were the defending world champions, and they got to the World Championship Series in 86 and 87. Milwaukee loses in 85. Mm -hmm. Milwaukee loses to Philadelphia. In the Mm -hmm. Eastern semifinals. And by the way, Julius the Dr. Irving was still playing. Charles Barkley was a second year player. Maurice Mm -hmm. Cheeks, Andrew Tony. Yeah, Michael Jordan had to uh, uh, Michael Jordan had to face some legends. And and by the Yeah, and and by the way, Billy Cunningham had just retired as coach of the Philadelphia Seventy Sixers. Okay, and underrated. Billy, yep, and, and underrated Billy, coach. And Billy Cunningham brought him brought his team to the World Championship Series, got himself a title. So to that bronze sexual, and I'm giving you this. I, I'm we're running a fast break, and I see you peeling out, ready to go up. Michael Jordan had to go through something LeBron hasn't gone through in 17 years. It's called a progression to being a champion. 
Actually, I will take. I will, I will. I will go one step further. Not only did Michael Jordan have to go through a progression, and we saw that progression, like you mentioned, with the underrated 1985 Bucks team, because people yep. rarely ever mention that team. Yep. The, the the greatest to me the greatest basketball team I've ever seen play the eighty six Celtics 86 and then the eighty seven Celtics, which they were no slouches because not only did they get to the World Championship Series on the way to there they beat the Bad Boys Pistons to get yep. there. Yep. So, uh, I mean, <laughs> those those were three tough teams that Jordan had to play in his first three playoffs since. Yep. So. I, I'm, I'm not, and then, and then the next three years, Pistons, Pistons, Pistons. Yep. So you can't tell me. And, and 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 for those who don't know the basketball history, the Pistons all three years at least went to the World Championship Series slash NBA Finals, and in, and in eighty nine and ninety won the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So in in Jordan's first six years in the league, he got one of the greatest basketball educations that any. Any elite superstar could ever get. I'll take that kind of education. If it means taking some L's against some great teams, I'll take those L's. I mean, Milwaukee yeah. had to take a couple against Philadelphia in the 80s before mm, they ro- before yeah. they rose to a brief power in 85, 86, and 87. And remember, the Milwaukee Bucks had to face the Boston Celtics three times. Okay. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that's, why I felt, that's why I felt for the Bucks. I was like, man, you came up during the wrong time, wrong mm-hmm. era. They did. They did. The only time the Bucks got past Boston was 1983, when they swept right. the Boston and, Celtics, and then they <laughs> lost in. And they, to the they swept it. They swept the Boston Celtics. They swept the Boston Celtics in '83, and then you run into Moses Malone and Dr. J and the Philadelphia 76ers. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. The, the time they get past the Celtics, then they, they run against the best Sixers team in the history of the organization. Yes. I'm like, that's cold. That's, I was like, man, they kept up during the wrong time. That's just wrong, okay? Sidney Moncrief against Sidney Moncrief trying to defend Andrew Tony. <laughs> Mr. Uh, 15 foot jumper himself, mm, man. The, oh. bo- the Boston Strangler, as he was coined. Because of mm. the because of his game seven performance, thirty one points in right. nineteen eighty two in the too. Boston Garden. Okay? Yep. So the progression that Michael Jordan had to go through was there. The legends were already established. And oh by the and oh by the way, Michael Jordan does own a game winning jump shot in nineteen eighty five. That occurred in game four uh, game three in Chicago Stadium, I beg your pardon. Game three. So he had to go through so, that and had to go through mm-hmm. a five game series with an up and coming Cleveland Cavaliers ball club, not once but twice, eighty eight and eighty nine, and we know what happened May seventh, nineteen eighty nine. So yes. anything that LeBron is being praised for, Michael Jordan fought off to get to the ultimate round, which is the world championship series. Here is where I push back against a bronze sexual on that. <laughs> So LeBron looked like he was on that trajectory to actually progress the way, not not exactly the way Jordan did, but similarly to how Jordan did. Because I mean, he ran into he ran into his bad boy Pistons with the Celtics, the mm-hmm. the, the big three, the Celtics. He did. So if he were to have done his homework and been that that guy that I think we as old school basketball uh, fans would respect, he would take that team, learn the lesson he learned in eight, in, in 2008. Um, in, in my opinion, I think he, he should have, he, he should have found a way to, to get to that NBA finals in 2009. Mm-hmm. Yep. He should have. I'm, I'm not, I'm not discounting the, the magic. No, I'm not discounting them not at, at all. all. Not but, at all. But if, but he, I, he should have found a way to have that team go to the finals that year. When he got a chance to play against the Celtics in 2010, he had home court advantage to boot. That should have been a series where people would say, <laughs> LeBron has arrived. What does he do? He lays he an egg. He a game five of that series, gets bounced in six, and he decides to make a, th- make a big three of his own, and he doesn't, quote, scale the mountain, close quote, when it comes to the Celtics until 2012. Well, as you've heard the mouth of Kevin Garnett, he doesn't respect that. And I totally understand why, because old school dictates that 
if you meet up against a mountain with the team that you that, that you originally bring to that mountain, you've got to scale that mountain and beat them to get to that top with that squad. Yep. Not go to another squad to do it. And and I think with bronze sexuals, they forget. Uh, Jordan didn't do a bypassing of a progression. His thought was, I don't give a crap if I have a leather broomsticks on yep. the on, on on the court with me. Yep, I'm gonna do my best and I'm gonna bring them a championship. He thought that back in '84 when he didn't have all the skills necessary, and I'm not talking about all the physical skills. I'm talking about all the mental skills that it took to be that champion. But that's how he thought. That's how he thought. In yep. '84, he thought that. So, so of course, it stood to reason yeah. that seven years later he would do it when he actually had a semblance of a team with him. Yeah. Yeah. And, and with and LeBron, it was not the case because he nope. needed to have a situation that was suited for him instead of being the guy where people built around him. Mm-hmm. And that is what happened with Jordan. He was the guy, the, the organization realized that then they started to build pieces around him to compliment him. The same was not said for LeBron, nope. especially with the fact that he wanted to handpick teams and he wanted to be the general <laughs> manager of the Cavs and say, I want this guy on our team. I want this guy on the highest. In the front office say, you have this skill set. Why don't we take some of the some of the pressure off you by having this guy do this thing, this guy do this thing, this guy do this thing, and we're going to build a team around you. You're going to be the centerpiece, and we're going to bring you that championship. No, he didn't. He just he, he figured he was the guy. He was he was the big man on campus, and voila, a championship would appear. Well, that didn't happen. He was like, okay, well, let me go to a place where I can play with a buddy, uh, bring another <laughs> all star along with me, and then we can get a championship. And he followed that up the first year. He did. So, I mean, he did. <laughs> I mean, it was bad. It was bad. I mean, it, uh, and I, I can go on about that. You, you know what? <laughs> it was it was bad. Mm-hmm. It was bad. I mean, LeBron basically fouled up his shot at a championship in two thousand nine. He did. He fouled he up. He did. His- and, and 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 before people get on both of us, yes, I realize. He scored close to 40 points in that series. Yes. And I think he pulled down like eight rebounds, eight assists in there too. Absolutely. Yeah, I realized that. Absolutely. I realized that. Mm-hmm. I realized that. Thing is, when you have that issue, you're supposed to also help the other teammates bring you along instead yep. of basically be the guy, mm-hmm. the only guy. Yeah. Because Jordan, even though he could score with the best of them, Yes. He always found a way to get his teammates involved. <laughs> always did. did. And, 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 and contrary to popular opinion, Jordan didn't always, one, want to take the last shot. Right. If he needed to, he would. Mm-hmm. And he didn't, too, need to take the last shot. Correct. All he wanted to do was at least have the ball in his hands so he can make the right basketball play. Yep. And if it meant he took the shot, cool. If it meant there was a teammate that was wide open, cool. Steve uh, Kerr. Circa 1997 NBA Steve Finals. Kerr. Steve Kerr. Do you hear me? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the IQ of LeBron was not as strong as it should have been, and that is my issue with him. Johnny Paxson, 1993, although he got an assist from Pippen and Grant, so there were three assists on that play. Jordan whipped it to Pippen. Right. Pippen flipped it to Grant. Mm-hmm. Grant flipped it back out to Paxson. You know the rest of the story. And also right. – I don't think LeBron has had this kind of iconic moment. The day was April 20th, 1986. My beloved favorite announcer, the late great Jimmer, had this. Michael on the drive across the lane. Turnaround shot. Got it. 63 for Jordan. Yeah. I can't, I can't find that kind of signature moment. And don't give me that chase down block against the Golden State Warriors. It shouldn't have gone to a no. seventh game anyway in that series and you know how i feel about that series so don't give me that chase that's down block the, that's not the one they should bring up if, if if any if any lebron james fan worth his salt would actually bring if they were to challenge you and bring up the right type of iconic not necessarily play but iconic moment 
Game five, Eastern Conference Finals, the fourth quarter in overtime. To me, that was his iconic moment. Mm-hmm. And 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 look and to me, LeBron in the thirteen years since has not eclipsed that. He hasn't even come close to it. Nope. And no, don't give me that. And don't give me that. Cleveland, this is for you. Don't moment hand nine me years that. later. No, don't hand me that. No, don't no. hand me that. No. That, that, no. That moment, no, uh, Cle- Cleveland, no. this is for you, really? No, David Stern put that in motion. LeBron put that, and you know what? I'll go one step further. You want a lob? Here it is. LeBron put that in motion after he got his butt kicked in game four of the World Championship Series because D- Draymond Green bodied him up, period. And that's all that happened. He bodied him up, and he oh, I can't deal with Draymond Green. Oh, uh, yeah, try that. Uh, well, yeah, it, I, I always laugh at Stephen A. Smith. He always says that the uh, that LeBron James received a stimulus package for that. <laughs> Did they not receive a big fat stimulus package? <laughs> did they? Oh, man. Did did they not receive a stimulus package among stimulus packages? Well, well, well I mean, that series would have been over to five. So it should yeah, I have you, been, I guess you say it did. It should have been a, and I will always contend this. People will think, oh, you're just a conspiracy theorist. No, I know what I saw and I know what I heard. That was a five game conquest waiting to happen. Period. And I've, and I've said this to you on air and off air. Uh, that suspension, that one game suspension that, that, that Green served, it should not have been in that series. It should have been the series before. In the Western but Finals. They, West Conference Finals, but they gave him a pass in that series. They decided to issue that one game suspension in this series, mm-hmm. and to me, all on those lines, that to me is a conspiracy theory that I think holds water and is true. Because I'm like, oh, okay, this is interesting. Yeah, yeah because we, we Green didn't do anything to me that warranted the suspension after Game Four. Right, he, he didn't. He he really he didn't. didn't. He he really didn't. That should have been a five game conquest. And I've gone way over time here. I gotta, I gotta move on. But <laughs> listen, I'm bringing back Snowman Unfiltered, and you know I'm getting you on the phone, and we're just gonna cut up about this and 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 many, many other things. I'll let you know when the relaunch is. This is Cole Johnson, the okay. man in charge of Cole Johnson on the daily and Cole Sports. Look for the VIP honors. Yours truly will be a part of that. We're gonna have some great voices on there. Man, thank you so much for hopping on. I truly appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. And thank you for being a part of VIP Honors, which will be this Sunday. I'm so thankful. Thank All you so right. Much. All right. What? Oh, shucks. That means I got some work to do. You'll have what you, you'll have what you need. I got so hung up. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll talk. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate the time. No, no problem, man. Well, I hope you enjoyed this premiere edition of Snowman After Dark. Cole Johnson, always a pleasure to have him on. Tomorrow you'll hear from C.J. Swartz, Desmond Johnson, and Mike DeBate as we break down the conference championships and start tipping our hand towards Super Bowl 54. I got to get out of here. I got to get some sleep. I will be on with you all at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning on Snowman in the Morning. Until tomorrow, God bless everybody.